So it was in Tibet, uh, and it was in the 2000s, in this case in 2008, where I had the opportunity to go to one of the most remote monasteries. Uh, it took six days out of Lhasa just to get to the monastery. And once we were there, the only way to get to the monastery was through the local mode of transportation, a yak, <laughs> which is an amazing way to travel, if you've never traveled by yak, up the mountain trail to the monastery. And it was in this place where I first encountered some of the nuns who I sensed were of advanced age, but I didn't know for sure. Uh, because on the one hand, they looked like they might be, but on the other hand, they didn't look like elderly people that I had encountered in the West. Their skin was taut, it wasn't baggy and saggy, their eyes were bright and clear. They had teeth, they had hair, sometimes they shave their hair, especially the women, shave their hair for convenience, for hygiene, but it's still growing. And so it was in this particular monastery where I asked one particular woman, how old are you? And I asked because the Mother Superior was able to provide the papers. Now, this is one of those places in this program, I cannot show you her face for security uh, and to honor and respect her privacy and her safety. Okay, but I'm going to tell you about her. And then we are going to look at a couple of other examples where I can show you their faces and you're gonna see the same thing. But it was in this particular woman, it was the first time, this is my tip off, my clue, that longevity is possible in ways that we simply don't embrace in the West. We discount it, we call it a hoax or we call it a fake. But it's like those out of place artifacts so many examples of advanced age are cropping up in so many places of the world, the anomalies are now beginning to tell a story, and the story is very different from the story that you and I probably have been led to believe in the past. The Tibetan nun that I'm talking about right now, when we saw her papers, what we saw is the confirmed date of her birth was 1885, all right? And the year that I was with her was the year 2005. We went back again in 2008. My first contact with her was in 2005. 1885 to 2005, that means I was looking into the eyes of a woman who was 120 years old. She did not look like 120 years old. She lived in a single room. She walked to the river every morning down a hillside to bring up the water. She grew a lot of her own food in the vessels and the vases that were available to her. Basel, tomatoes, uh, herbs that she would eat uh, every day in a very, very minimal diet. She was good, healthy, strong, and vital. And that told me that something is happening with her that maybe is happening with other people. Well, interestingly, I asked her what was her secret, and she looked at me through the translator and she said one word, compassion. She said that's what we learn in these monasteries. That is the essence of our Buddhist teachings. It's all about compassion. We'll see in a moment why compassion would have an effect of longevity. Before we do that, I want to show you a couple of other cases because, because I want you to see this isn't an anomaly. It wasn't long after I met this Tibetan woman that the national media ran a story about a woman uh, in the Palestinian territories. And you're seeing her face on the screen right now uh, because she made national news. This was on uh, uh, the Associated Press. This woman, when you look at her, ask yourself how old you think she is, because here's her story. She went shopping one day. She hadn't been out for a while. She had to go through a military checkpoint that she didn't have to go through before, didn't exist before. They looked at her papers. They said, your papers are expired. You have to go to the authorities and get some new papers. And that's when she made headlines, because when they checked back through her records, they found that her date of birth was 1888. And the woman you're looking at, in the year 2008, she is 120 years old. Now, I'm not saying that she looks like she's in her 20s, but I think she looks really good for 120 years old. Her eyes are bright, her skin color is good, her teeth are good, she still has her hair. And I want to know what is her secret? And she said the secret for her was the love that she had for her family, her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her great-great-grandchildren. She said, they need me every day. What would they do without me? She said, I fix their meals. I help them with their schoolwork. I help them everything they're doing in their lives. I work in the garden so that I can prepare the food for them. She feels needed and she loves her family and she feels loved. That is a heart-based experience.